Hi guys, uh, we've been getting a lot of uh, requests to do an updated walkthrough of the patrol, um, especially now that we're traveling full time. We've got a bit of an opportunity here to clean it up and get a few things tidied, so we thought now's as good a time as any to take you through the current setup. We'll give you pretty much like a full walkthrough of the car of absolutely everything, so this will be the most up to date um, thing to check out if you're interested in any specific parts of the patrol. We'll start by going pretty much all around the outside of the car and then into the inside setup um, after that and we'll just try and give you as much info as we go. Okay, so for those that are new to the channel or haven't sort of seen our older videos, it's a 1992 GQ Patrol, a long wheelbase wagon, Y60, whatever you want to call it. We've owned the car for about six years now. There's other videos of how it was when we got it and stuff, but we've been traveling full time on the road. So we just thought now's a good time to take you through exactly how we're living out of the car. Up the front of the car, uh, we've got a custom bull bar made. It was made to suit the car and actually sit quite high up around the body. Um, originally, it didn't have any hoops or brush bars or anything like that. We got them added before our trip, just for a bit of extra protection. On the bull bar, uh, we've got some six inch LEDs down low for um, really good sort of floodlight um, lights the edge of the road really well and then we've got 70 watt HID light force lights um, which are really good for distance they're just the pencil beam a Runva nine and a half thousand pound uh, winch we've made up a little custom stainless cover plate which just sort of protects the winch rope um, from sun damage and also like just crap getting on it when we aren't using it it's real easy it's just two uh, nut certs so just undo the two bolts and out it comes there's a air outlet so we've got a compressor on board which we'll show later uh, to a six litre tank under the car and there's a front and rear outlet so we can clip in our air hose and air up from the front or the back of the car. There's also a water outlet which runs through a glined hot water exchanger, um, a heat exchanger in the engine bay so we can have hot or cool water through there uh, as well as a, a Anderson plug for solar input or power out. Uh, which is really handy just for plugging in accessories. Uh, we also changed the headlights to a DOT approved LED headlight. I'm pretty sure from memory they're called, uh, they were from JTX lights on eBay. Um, they were around $370 I think, but they are stamped with the DOT approval, so they are legal to use. Uh, over on the passenger side we've got uh, two GME aerials uh, for two separate UHFs in the car. Um, I like to keep one free for either channel 18, channel 10 or if we're in a convoy use it for that but also use the other one for channel 40 or 29 on the highways. The big aerial is actually exchangeable. I've also got a short antenna for um, it's a lower db rating for in the hills we can just swap them out on the go um, the big aerial is also on a folding gme mount which is really handy you can lower it down because it's quite rigid being a fiberglass antenna it's also set up the black aerial on the passenger side is about an inch or so higher than our uh, rooftop tent so in any low clearance spots I know pretty much coming straight into it if the aerial hits um, it's going to be um, too low for the tent. I do know the overall height it's about 2.45 um, 
so we've been pretty lucky with where we need to go so far. There's also a quick release stainless mount for our sand flag for when we get over to the Simpson and stuff. On the driver's side we've just got a GoPro click in mount at the moment and a FM antenna uh, which gives us a lot better reception for our radio. Uh, we do get asked quite a fair bit about the number plates, they don't mean anything. Uh, they were just the original plates uh, on the wagon from brand new that the dealer put on and I just stuck with them. Um, there's no meaning behind it. Triple six doesn't have any hidden meaning or anything. It's just the original plates that were on the car. We just got them redone in the uh, black background with silver lettering. So from the hoops on the front bar, uh, we got brush bars added which go down to our uh, rock sliders. They've been all reinforced into the chassis so they're really, really strong. Uh, when I first got the car, we did a few four-wheel driving tracks that actually bent them up and made it so the doors couldn't open. So we've strengthened them and they're um, solid now. You can rest the car on them, no problem. Uh, we also added the rear hoops just to add a bit of extra protection uh, for the rear quarter panels. Um, they wrap around to the rear bar. And all the bar work is custom made on the car, nothing is off the shelf. So we did actually add uh, rear hoops onto the from the sliders to the rear bar just to protect the rear quarters a little bit. Uh, we have bashed them in a few times before on banks so that just helps a bit of protection another thing the brush bars actually do is uh, for legal reasons with um, the tires poking out past the body we do have um, they are 75 millimeter rubber flares off the guard but the tires were still just barely poking out. So what the brush bars actually do is add that extra bit of coverage, um, which helps uh, keep it legal for engineering and stuff. So they come to the rear bar. Uh, the rear bar was originally done by a business called Patrol Customs in uh, Brisbane, Queensland. It's changed a fair bit from when we got the bar. So um, it used to have twin jerry can holders and a chainsaw mount and stuff like that. Um, it also used to be twin tube all the way around, which we changed um, just for a bit of clearance and stuff. Uh, we've added uh, mud flaps to the rear just to keep it a bit more legal and keep the mess down. So basically now it's a twin swing away. Um, the passenger side swing away is a custom made sort of kitchen box we got done. Uh, I drew this up and a friend of mine, uh, Brendan, welded it all up for me. So it's all 2.5 aluminium. Uh, to keep the weight down, we were going to do it in stainless, but 1.4 stainless to 2.4, 2.5 aluminium was a huge weight difference. So the bottom third of it, where it tapers down, is actually a, just a gravity-fed water tank, which we've found really, really helpful when we're travelling. We aren't too worried if we get non-drinking uh, water in here. This is more just for pretty much like filling up our dog's water bowl, washing our hands, you know, cleaning teeth, washing our dish, that sort of stuff, just around camp. Uh, we've got an internal water tank which we'll show uh, when we get up to that, which we only ever put uh, drinkable water in. But this one's just really simple being gravity fed down the bottom and it holds around about 34 litres so it's actually lasting us a lot longer than we expected and in the top section of the box it's just a gas strut uh, lifting the gull wing door up um, a slide out bench and all storage for 
everything related to cooking, kitchen, that sort of stuff. So our cooker, uh, pots, pans, plates, cutlery, um, sauce, salt, pepper, all that stuff is all in there. Um, and we've actually got plenty of room to play with. We can put um, like more groceries, dry food, stuff like that in there. Uh, we've also run power to it. Uh, we were gonna have to run power in anyway for the number plate light. Uh, so we ran power in uh, just with a dual USB port to charge stuff, a cigarette plug as well, and some core light strips which are the switchable from orange to clear, uh, orange to white light, and also on a dimmer, which has been absolutely perfect for camping. Uh, it is lockable as well. And up the top of the rear of the swing away, we have two 1.25 gas bottles. Uh, originally, we were gonna bring a bigger size gas bottle, but in the first six weeks of travel we only emptied one uh, gas cylinder so we're pretty happy with using it in that way too because once one runs out when we're on the second one all we've got to do is through any small town just get the other one topped up it's working out really easy we do alternate as well uh, we've got a jet boil so for boiling water for coffees and uh, hot water bottles, stuff like that. We just normally use the jet boil with its own little uh, cylinder. It's a lot more efficient. Those are just more for cooking on our uh, single burner stove, which has been working perfect. Okay, so on the driver's side swing away, it's just our spare tire. Uh, we did get a custom canvas bag made up by Total Trimming in Lismore. It's just got two side pockets um, up either side and this big bag on the rear. It's pretty much just used for our garbage bag. Uh, we just put a, you know, a bin liner bag inside of it and it just keeps all the mess out of the car itself. We also use it quite a fair bit to put our uh, clothes washing in. So we use a scrubber bag uh, almost every day, uh, fill it with dirty clothes, put water in, laundry liquid, and throw it in here. As we're driving, it just sort of uh, moves it around, helps to clean it. Then we can finish it off at camp and uh, hang it out. Uh, it's just got a couple of eyelets in the bottom to help drain water out. Um, up above is just a small tray that we sort of just use to fill in a bit of wasted space. What we've been using it for is uh, we've got a canvas bag just with some uh, dry hardwood uh, for firewood. Just strap that onto the top and then we can normally just find sticks and stuff to get a fire going and then chop that up to build a fire at camp. Uh, just underneath it is a single row 10 inch LED light uh, just on a switch in the center console for reversing. Also on the rear bar uh, we've just got our two Andersons, one for a full um, power out and one for running through the SeaTac system uh, for solar in. Also just a flat seven pin uh, trail plug. Uh, reverse camera mounted right in the center, which has been really handy for hooking up trailers and stuff. Also on either side of the rear bar, we've actually got the air fittings for our airbag man airbags in the rear coils. So it's really easy access to inflate or deflate them as we need, uh, depending on the load. Just unscrew the little cap and it's just a tire valve. Yeah, inflate and deflate as we need. Uh, the roof racks all custom made, um, just tube uh, steel with custom made mounts to the gutters. Uh, we originally had it done with our old clamshell tent just to keep everything as low as possible, but it works out well with this as well. Up top, we've got a Bunda top tent from Bunda Tech. Uh, it's all electric. We've also got the added room on the side, uh, which originally we weren't too sure if we needed, but we've been using it a fair bit more than we thought. 
on top we've mounted just a lightweight flex uh, flexible solar panel it's 130 watt so as we we're driving and parked you know through the day we've got constant solar charge going in it's all pre-wired through the tent um, it's just four buckles two front two rear and then uh, electric winch lifts it up on the roof rack um, we've mounted some uh, eyelets uh, we changed the ladder for the tent to a telescopic ladder so we just use the eyelets uh, with a <coughs> basically an R clip to hold the ladder in place which has worked perfect um, we've got a 40 inch single row LED light bar mounted underneath the front which is underneath the max tracks mounts. We carry four max tracks on the top. Um, they just use the standard max tracks locking pins. We've mounted three six inch single row LED lights, which are on a switch for when we're off road at night. Uh, we can have spread light out either side and the rear, as well as the separate rear light. Um, we've also added in a, a shoe shelf just up the left hand side of the ladder We've got this little bit of folded aluminium uh, We just undo one bolt which holds it into the frame and slide it out and it just gives a good platform up high uh, We can climb up and put our wet wet or dirty shoes up there um, Keep them up out of the weather on uh, so on the passenger side of the car, we've got a Foxwing awning, the 270 degree awning. Uh, we just recently changed to the new bag, which stores the uh, poles and pegs as well inside of there. So just while we're on it, uh, we actually modified the Foxwing awning. We drilled out the holes a little bit bigger to use um, some spigot tent poles that we got from Super Peg. Uh, they're actually peggable feet, so we don't need to run guy lines off the tent We can just run it out with those poles and peg the feet into the ground. We're good to go um, So that bag there holds uh, the awning the four peggable feet poles as well as um, four snow peak um, pegs So everything we need is up there um, it's also got a two and a half meter LED light strip mounted into it and it's also got an extra auxiliary power point which we can plug um, more of the core orange and white light bars into. So we can actually have the full awning out, the light strip on inside and run the orange and white lights on the poles or externally wherever we need to. So we've got more than enough light. So uh, how we've done it, all the wiring from all the lights on the roof rack and the tent, they just run down a channel behind our snorkel uh, and then into the engine bay, which is really uh, easy, neat and tidy. And uh, all the lights on the roof are actually running through a plug. Um, we have been caught out before with needing to take the roof uh, the roof rack and the tent off so everything's just on a plug just unclip it the whole thing can come off the roof and we're good to go um, no snipping wires or anything like that and we've tried to carry that on through the car with the um, stuff like the winch the aerials all that sort of stuff everything's on plugs so if we ever need to take the bull bar off and stuff like that, we can just un unplug and keep going. Okay guys, so now we'll move on to the engine and driveline side of things. So it is an original silver top 4.2, the TD42. Um, it was rebuilt about 50,000 Ks ago. So we'll just run you through a pretty basic um, idea of how the car's set up uh, today. It has been running really well for that whole time. So um, by this point, we're obviously really happy with the setup. 
uh, just before we open it up, uh, we've put two GU um, bonnet scoops on the car. A lot of people like to argue whether they do anything and they should be forward or rear facing or whatever. I like the look of it and it does shove some cool air into the engine bay, it can't be hurting it. So we have added um, some gas struts to the bonnet which do help hugely rather than having to use the old support. So I'll try and take you through the engine setup the best I can. Um, it was rebuilt just to basically um, turbo TD42 specs, so nothing, you know, out of the ordinary, no forged or billet, anything like that. Uh, we've got a patrol doctor through the bonnet snorkel, just a four inch stainless snorkel into the patrol doctor airbox. It's a, a Garrett 3076 turbo. Um, it's running 36 PSI. We ran it in on about 15 um, for about 2,000 kilometers and then went up to about 20 PSI. Um, after we changed the intake and everything like that, we wound it up to um, 36 and it's actually been on that for probably close to 40,000 Ks now and absolutely no dramas. The more boost we actually ran, the better it started getting on diesel. Um, from driving trucks, what I've seemed to notice is because it's actually not working as hard, um, making more power and torque, it's not using, uh, needing to use as much fuel, but that's just my um, perspective on it. It's been really reliable, really good on fuel, hasn't been running hot, so I'm happy with it. Um, that turbo is a lot more suited for mid to high power, which suits us fine. Um, it's not very good down low. Um, below sort of 1400 revs, you're not gonna be getting much boost. Um, from about there, you're gonna build, you know, around eight PSI and up. Um, but sitting at 100 on the highway, you need to overtake, something like that. It's really good rev range uh, to come on to boost. We're running an external wastegate on that. Um, two and a half inch hot side um, intercooler piping into a PWR 600 by 300 intercooler, which I'll just quickly mention Every, uh, this is still running the factory aircon um, and everything works. We didn't have to cut out the grill, but we did have to shave it. So behind the fins at the front needed to sort of be shaved um, to actually fit back on. Two and a half hot side piping to three inch cold side uh, into a custom made uh, inlet manifold, um, upgraded injectors, off the turbo is a three and a half inch stainless dump and that goes into a full stainless three and a half inch exhaust all the way through, no muffler or anything. We've got a Aussie Desert Coolers alloy radiator which has been really good, no complaints with that. We've done a custom stainless overflow bottle as well as a catch can off the side of it. Uh, it's just all built into one. A uh, stainless steel washer bottle on the other side. Uh, there's the Glind heat exchanger, which we mentioned before. We've got the BRC uh, diff gearbox and transfer case breathers mounted up high behind the airbox. This car is actually engineered um, for full GU running gear, which is why we're able to get a bit bigger tire size. I'm not too sure how it is at the moment though, because I've had people try to do it, do what I've done after um, I got mine and were turned down. But basically it's running full GU diffs, GU steering, brakes, everything. But at the time we put those in, they were fully rebuilt. Um, we put 4.6 centers in. The front is just an auto locker 
which we've had for six years and it's been really really good um, if ever it does you know cause us any dramas I probably would change it to something like a Harrop or a TJM locker but at the moment there's just no need um, it's been working perfectly the only thing I've noticed is it does make the steering a bit heavy in four wheel drive but when we're on tracks it's really easy just to bump it into two wheel drive to get around a really tight turn and then put it back into four wheel the front's just a auto locker and the rear is just a shimmed LSD a lot of people I know have sort of gone that way you sort of eliminate the risk of breaking a rear locker especially with the torque and stuff that goes through there um, and it has worked perfectly um, we've never had any issues with it we are running a, a sub tank in the car it's a brown a brown davis a 78 liter auxiliary tank which is mounted um, sort of in the middle of the car forward of the rear axle which we wanted to get that extra weight um, in the middle of the car, forward of the rear axle. Um, so the standard tank's around 90 litres and uh, that's the 78 auxiliary. Um, it's just switchable in the cab from a toggle switch. So onto the suspension, uh, it's running King heavy duty 5 inch coils front and rear. Uh, King shocks all round which are the 2.5 inch adjustable uh, smoothies with a remote reservoir. We've also got the King Shocks uh, steering stabilizer up front. Basically all the other suspension arms like your lower trailing arms, all that are all superior. There's a few here and there that were on the car that haven't been an issue, uh, but everything else as we've gone, we've replaced with full chromoly uh, superior engineering with lifetime warranty and stuff. So there's, you know, adjustable pan hard bar, um, plus 15 lower control arms. Uh, we've got the adjustable uppers uh, and had to change one of them to the bent arm to suit the sub tank. Currently, I'm just running the rear sway bar in this. Um, I've noticed that the front doesn't actually sort of help handling um, in our setup really too much. Um, we did also add in the airbag man coil assist kit in the rear which definitely helped just maintain a level ride height and stuff um, with all the extra weight in the back of the car that we've added in. Um, it was just too hard to get a coil that stiff to actually um, keep it level. So underneath the car there's also a six litre air tank uh, mounted which is plumbed into the ARB twin compressor. Um, it's got outlets front and rear um, as well as the water lines which run forward through the glind heat exchanger and rear. Also water lines which run forward through the heat exchanger in the front to the bull bar and one that comes out on the tire swing out. It's also under pressure, so I can use that with a hose um, if I really wanted to wash the car. I can also use it to fill the gravity fed tank um, with the pressure, just using the little flow jet pump. And we did put the GU diffs in at the same time. Uh, they were fully rebuilt with DBA kangaroo paw discs. Just used uh, Bendix four-wheel drive pads in there. Both discs were fully braced as well as on the front we've got a superior engineering weld-on um, bash guard and on the rear is a bolt-on bash guard. We also added in uh, new wheel studs on the diffs. Um, basically everything end-to-end -end was rebuilt. The wheels are just uh, 16 by 8 negative 22 offset um, steel rim. On them we've got the Nitto Trail Grappler tyres which we've been really happy with. Um, they're a 31575 R16. Okay guys you might notice we're in a different spot now. We ran out of daylight with filming the video. Um, this will be a pretty in-depth uh, walk through the interior as well as a little bit of camping setup 
um, why we've done things a certain way. Just thought we'd start the driver's seat and pretty much do a lap around the car. In the front, it's all pretty basic stuff. Uh, we just put a dash mat in before we left. We've got the HEMA HN7 Navigator, which we never had really used too much before this trip, but we've been really, really happy with it on this trip. A lot of the tracks that we've done and even some of the campsites are already mapped on the four-wheel drive maps. We ended up buying uh, HEMA paper maps because we like sort of tracking and in the afternoon having a look at where we're going. But it's really good on the HEMA just being able to track it. Even when we did Montezuma and Climbies, that sort of stuff, it's all actually on there. So you can sort of follow where you're going and it leaves a track tail, which is really handy. Below that, uh, we had a custom stainless uh, dash pod made up. So in here, there's just a dual USB charge port, which we use absolutely every day for our phones. Then the switches coming across, uh, we've got a switch for our compressor, which is a dual ARB uh, compressor mounted in one of the side wings. I can flick that on and charge it up because uh, we've got a six litre air tank under the car. I can flick that on from there or in the emu wing which we'll show you in a bit where the actual air fittings are placed. Next to that is the water pump. Basically, if we're gonna use the Glind heat exchanger, I can actually sit in the car with it running um, to keep it warm and flick the pressure on and off. It is also on another switch as well, which we'll show you. In the middle, we've got the reverse camera. So the reverse camera is actually wired to come on automatically with reverse gear but I also wanted it on a switch to come up basically when we're towing or driving along some of the tracks it's a bit handy um, just being able to manually control when it comes on pretty good then next to that we've just got the winch isolator switch which is power obviously to uh, the winch and then winch in and out so I don't need to plug in the little controller or I've got a wireless controller which I don't need to use. I wanted it that way so when we're on the tracks it's all right there in front of me and I can still sort of watch what's going on while having full control of the winch. Next to that we've just got uh, two gauges. I got Autometer Phantom 2 series gauges. There's just a water temp and boost pressure. Main reason we went for these is I was having trouble finding a boost gauge that actually read over 30. We're running 36 PSI. That was the main reason we went for these. We've got a RAM mount for an iPhone. I sort of keep mine in there while I'm driving along, but we don't really use it as navigation because we've got the HEMA HN7. I've got a switch that alternates whether we draw from the sub tank or the main tank. I've just got a Pioneer doubled in head unit uh, which you can watch DVDs and stuff on. We never really use it for that but it is handy for the reverse camera. And then just a digital pyro gauge that was in there when I bought the car and it's worked fine ever since. We got the gear boots retrimmed in just new leather. I put a gear knob from a GU Series 4, um, just a leather gear knob on the main gear stick. And we had a custom uh, gear knob made from Billet Works, um, a company in America, and just had the, our little Overland Obsessed logo laser etched into it. We put the twin cup holders in the middle. In the center console, I've got four switches. They're basically all just lighting. So I can switch the driving lights, which are the two six inch lights in the lower half of the bull bar. Then there's one for the light bar, one for the three six inch lights on our roof rack to light all around the car and also one for the reverse light which is mounted on the rear swing away which is just a 10 inch uh, single led light bar the switch for the light force hids is actually up on the dash near the aircon controls we've got 
uh, Recaro Ergo Med DS seats, which are fully electric, um, so fully adjustable. They've also got cooling fans, which extract heat from the foam of the seat, as well as heating, which we've already used on this trip because it's been quite cold down here in Tassie. At the moment, we've just got cheap neoprene uh, like wetsuit material seat covers on them not really happy with them so probably going to change them to a canvas type like a black dark cover or something like that mainly in the front under my seat i keep a noco gb70 jump starter which is really good even on low charge it's still enough to jump start the 4.2 diesel um, i also keep a fire striker fire extinguisher just under my seat in case of an emergency between the seats sort of behind the center console uh, we just have like a little box made up which just keeps two water bottles and a, a little airtight container we normally just keep stuff like lollies and stuff like that for long road trips um, long days on the road just something to have as we're going we use the Ping Jing sound deadener matting as well as acoustic matting. Did the whole floor. I ran out of time. I did want to actually do all the door cards as well, but we didn't get there before our trip. So we fully sound deadened the floor and the acoustic matting and put all new carpet through before the new seats went in. We had the door cards re-trimmed in the same material, the actual Recaro. Uh, trim just to match the seats uh, We also had these little leather armrests added to the two front doors, which was a big thing I wanted I just always found myself resting my elbow on the tiny little plastic um, shelf there So that's just a bit of aluminium that was folded up that hooks over the original door card um, just with a bit of foam and wrapped in leather so being an ST um, all electric windows I did replace the electric mirrors which cost an absolute fortune from Nissan but they're impossible to find really on a secondhand car working so the original ones had just come off the mounts and were all rooted so we got new ones from Nissan there. One of the other things I keep under my driver's seat is one of the most underrated things we've actually had on this trip. We bought a two meter hose and it is really, really handy for just filling up the water tanks. I do have a hose that's about eight or nine meters long, but it's always a pain to get it out and you always end up with water in the hose. It is in a waterproof bag, but it just makes it so much easier with a short two meter hose. We also bought some tap fittings just to uh, hook on any tap. We do also have uh, just one of these little tamper keys. So it's just got different grooves for when places take the handle off. You can just slot that on depending on what groove it has and still operate the tap. Also up front, we've uh, changed to a Nardi steering wheel. It's the closest I could get um, to the original ST steering wheel. So it's a 390 mil classic black leather steering wheel with the uh, uh, black steel spokes, I guess you call them. And it's just got a nice feel to it. It's the same diameter or as close to the same diameter as the standard wheel as I could get. Um, and it's just a lot nicer feel and yeah good quality wheel that's just on a normal like cheap boss kit you buy from super cheap or anywhere like that up above we've got an outback roof console we use that pretty heavily we've got a lot of maps up in the map pocket as well as spare sunnies and that sort of thing it's all led lights then we've got two uh gme uhfs mounted there so one's just the TX4400 with your standard hand piece. And the other one is uh, one of their new hand pieces with all the controls on it. So the other unit's actually hidden away and the speaker is mounted on the hand piece with all the controls. So normally I keep the main one on the highway channel, whether it be 
uh, Pacific Highway 29 or 40. Um, just as we're traveling, I like to keep an ear on that. The other one, we alternate between sort of channel 18, um, if we want to pick up like caravanners and that, or channel 10 when we go off-road. Um, it also does allow you to keep one on scan when you're on off-road um, and one on the channel with the group you're with, which is handy. And I've just got a like emergency seatbelt cutter and glass breaker mounted on the side up there as well. Uh, also between our seats in the front we keep a first aid kit um, just handy to both of us in case something were to go wrong on the tracks or on the road. So I will just show you while we've got the setup. Uh, this is our most common kind of setup. It's the Bundatec tent with the um, added room awning out and we just tie it back to the um, bar work on the car so we don't actually need to hammer in any pegs and any of that stuff. Most of the time if we're somewhere for the full day I'll just take this off um, but if it's in between going up and down to the tent and stuff we'll just uh, lift it up out of the way pull the door out and it rests on the door. Behind the driver's seat uh, is sort of our dog scout little section. So all this is done on 25 by 25, 1.6 wall alloy with little joiners that we bought from Easy Steel Solutions. And you just hammer them in the end, cut it to length and you can make up any frame or whatever you want. So originally we had uh, made up a platform in place of the rear seats as low as we could possibly make it and this is all bolted into that so trying to get the most space out of what we had. What you can see here is up the top is where we keep Scout while we're traveling. Um, there is an attachment where we actually clip him in so he's you know restrained in that area. Uh, we do have a little bit of steel mesh in there at the moment just to stop him getting through um, into the front. With his section there, how we sort of did it up is to suit his size, which isn't really big. He's about 14 kilos or so. He's a French Bulldog. Um, he's got maybe a little bit less than half of this side. The area that he sits on when we travel is where he also sleeps unless it's warm, good weather, then we can actually lift a frame out, which is his bed, um, which was the same alloy tube, uh, alloy square tube that we got. Uh, there's also just a little super cheap uh, oscillating fan in there, which we planned. We would never leave him in the car when it's too hot, obviously, but it does just help airflow through the car and keep him a bit cooler if it is a warmer day, even just when we're driving. Below that, we've got a MSA uh, organizer. We used to have this behind uh, the driver's seat, but we changed the setup to mount on the side here. So this one realistically is mainly stuff for our dog, like his lead. Um, we've got little pop-up bowls for his food and water and stuff. I also keep uh, like just little handy things like a pocket knife, a leatherman tool, um, just a few things like that um, that are easy to get to. That's just hanging on two hooks through the eyelets that uh, we put into the organizer. So when we lift that off, on the left, uh, our folding core solar blanket which we throw out whenever we've got good sun. Uh, next to that, at the moment, our camera bag, which houses like our drone, GoPro, all our batteries, all our cords. In behind that, at the moment, is our VanQuest like grab and go bag. Normally, I would keep that in front of the camera bag, just at the moment, we're using all our camera gear, it's in front. Uh, in behind there, there's still more room for uh, our dog food, other dog related stuff. 
Uh, we keep his food in a little 10 litre dry bag, which is really handy. It doesn't get moisture in it or anything like that. It just keeps it really nice. Also got, you know, like a little day pack, like camel pack uh, bag in front there. In behind is a little MSA uh, cargo barrier bag, which holds uh, an extension cord for our solar panel, jumper leads, car wash, and car, you know, wash mitt and stuff like that. So we can try and keep the car clean when we get some water. Underneath that section there, you can see our water pump, which is just a little flow jet. Uh, basic water pump from the water tank the water tank actually fits in with all five seats just at the moment for us traveling we didn't need the rear seats in basically that water tank runs down to the water pump then through that is a t-piece so I can control whether to have water flowing to the front uh, bull bar water outlet which runs through the heat exchanger in the engine bay. So basically how that works, if you don't know, if the engine's cool, it'll just come out cool water. If the engine's warm, it'll come out, you know, to what degree you set that to. Uh, how we normally have it set is just to the rear, which is a water tap on the tire carrier. That is under pressure, obviously, with the water tap. Uh, with the water pump, sorry. You can actually use it under pressure, save you wanted to wash the car or something like that. That water tank's close to about 100 litres for the best I can measure it. In this section you can see there's a void because the water tank was made tapered to suit the rear seats. There's a void all the way through to the other side of the car. So we actually can keep longer things in there. We've got a few uh, extra awning poles, which are for our awning extra walls. We can prop them up. Uh, we also carry our sand flag, uh, which we will need when we get to other parts of the country. So anything longer we can store straight through the back there and it's not in the way of anything. Inside our bundu top, we've changed the mattress uh, which we get asked a lot about. The Bundatec tent is almost a perfect fit um, for the mattress we bought, which is an Exped Mega Mat Duo. It's a self-inflating air and foam mattress, uh, which comes with a little pump. We really like it because you're able to control the softness or firmness of the mattress. So we normally pull the deflate valve when we pack everything up just to make it all a bit more condensed um, but it's only a few pumps with the little pump sack to get it back up to how we like it uh, and you can change the comfort depending on yourself so we fit that mattress uh, to full uh, queen size comforter like dunas, uh, the sheets, two pillows, PJs, um, and we actually saw a few things under the mattress, um, underneath there, that we don't need day to day, and everything packs up fine in here. Another addition which Steph came up with, uh, we do like watching movies and uh, stuff on our laptop as well as video editing while we're up in the tent, especially in this cooler weather. With some of the wind and that, it's good just to climb up and get out of out of the elements. So we just bought a cheap, uh, it's like a steel pegboard shelf from Bunnings. And all we did was just add a few uh, lengths of paracord with adjustable knots and just some cheap little carabiners at the end and we clip it onto our winch and two eyelets either side so you can adjust the height and everything uh, of where our laptop is which has been like really handy you can just lay back in the tent put a movie on go to sleep whatever so that's been really handy um, that also stays up in the tent we just unclip it 
to not get in the way of the arms or ropes. Um, throw it on the mattress, good as gold. We changed almost all of our pegs to the snow peak pegs in different sizes. Definitely worth the money, I feel, because we've been on really rocky uh, ground and they just pretty much pierce their way through. Um, the normal tent, uh, tent peg, just with the bent top, we were just constantly bending them and getting frustrated, so really happy with those. They also have the little eyelet uh, with the matching hammer to just pull them out really easy. So driver's side wing, uh, it is an emu wing. This one we got fitted later, so it's a little bit different style. Uh, it's also powder coated aluminium. The other one on the passenger side is glass. Mm -hmm. Just an emu wing, gas struts. Uh, this is all built out with our draw system. So just basically underneath here is one of our auxiliary batteries. Uh, there's a slimline 150 amp hour AGM battery under here as well as the other side. So we've got 300 amp hours to play with. Uh, there's just a little control box here, uh, dual USB and a cigarette plug to charge any accessories. Three switches, just internal lights, these little round work lights, which are good for throwing it out. And also the other compressor switch, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, that's because the ARV twin compressor is mounted in here as well, behind a little false panel. Uh, so far, no issues with heat or anything. Um, I've run it, you know, for 10 minutes straight, just doing people's tyres and stuff. No dramas. That is uh, linked to a pressure switch with our 6 litre uh, air tank underneath. That really helps with pumping our tires up. Um, by the time you get to the next tire, that air tank's more or less full, and then it gets that full uh, burst of air in without having to work your compressor. Just little things we've done. There's a little digital uh, air gauge here. Um, obviously our airline, just in a little, these are quick fist. Uh, I think Iron Man do them. They're just little rubber um, grips that you can tuck everything into. Also keep, you know, a few tire deflators, a uh, little Fiskars hatchet, a uh, silky big boy folding saw, which is really, really handy. Uh, we also keep our winch blanket, tree trunk protector, recovery gloves, that sort of stuff in here. There is a little shelf here, which tends to get this sort of stuff left on it all the time. Um, we've just mounted, obviously, toothbrushes here. This little panel just drops down as a little bench to use. Um, these two are just toiletry bags. Me and Steph have one each. If we pull them out, in behind is uh, just a little removable uh, mirror, which Steph loves. Um, it's just velcroed to the back there so you can pull it out and put it in. That's mostly our, I guess, bathroom toiletry setup. That's just held on with a little uh, tonneau clip that's used on utes. Alright guys, so we're on to the back of the car. Just on this side we've just got a drop down table, nothing fancy, uh, we normally keep a tea towel and a cutting board just hanging on there. This is the false panel I was talking about. Um, if I pull the top and the bottom drawer out I just have to undo two bolts for that to come off and you can access the uh, ARB compressor as well as one of the batteries. In there we also keep a little spares kit, which is some spare radiator hoses, belts, a fuel filter, just a few things like that um, tucked away in there. Nothing that we'd need to get to very often, just in case we do need to get there. 
Uh, over this side, I've just got uh, like a fire starter uh, ferro rod from MCQ Bushcraft. That's just a little camp knife uh, SE3. In here is this little pouch with um, fire starters, like wet fire and that sort of thing. Down below is just a standard fire extinguisher uh, in case the one I carry under my seat isn't enough. Up the top of our drawer system, normally we've got this big uh, first aid kit, which is a lot more um, comprehensive than the one that we keep in the front. That just sort of sits at the back there, easy to grab in case we need it. This big drifter bag here is full of basically our awning accessories. So all the walls to enclose our awning um, as well as the fox wing floor, you know, just all the extra pegs and stuff like that uh, to do all that. That's actually something we may end up culling from our trip. We haven't really used it too much. Uh, the most we'll use is sort of one or two walls here and there to block the wind. Um, we haven't so far needed to fully enclose the awning. Uh, normally in the middle here is our two uh, jet tent pilot chairs. They just slot in here side by side. We're still tossing up. Uh, we may actually change those to a more compact chair, um, something like the Helinox chairs. Um, they fit in there, no worries. Um, next to that is our dual car shower tent which we've actually modified it's also our toilet tent um, so we've just modified it uh, with a zip in the base to set up our little uh, folding toilet that all sits up there next to that's our inverter um, we normally only use that sort of when we're getting good solar or when we're driving um, sometimes I'll leave an extension lead plugged through the car to the front if we want to, you know, charge some batteries. The only thing we really uh, need it for is our laptop. Over this side, uh, we've just got a little uh, bottle opener mounted as well as a few switches. So these are just, again, little work light switches up here. Um, interior lights, which are a few LED strips up inside and camp light which is just around the door here which is our main one we use sort of looking into the fridge and stuff. Down this side below the gullwing box uh, we keep a snatch strap, our snatch block. Um, I always like to keep a little bit of extra coolant, engine oil, brake fluid um, I just keep like a one litre bottle of whatever I can fit in there. Up above those is just a little tool roll. I'm no mechanic, uh, so I've just got the basic sort of stuff in there. I've also got a few extra tools in one of the drawers. But that tool roll, it's just got all your basic stuff to get you out of trouble in. Uh, behind all that stuff is the second slimline AGM battery. We were going to put a false panel over that but it's been working just fine how it is. Over this side we've got a slimline drawer above the fridge. This is the closest thing to your junk drawer in your kitchen at home. It's got random crap all through it. Um, we mainly keep our cutlery in here, anything sort of slimmer. I've got a tire repair kit blown out all through here. I also keep, you know, some 3M tape. Uh, we've got little uh, Altoids tins to keep ear cleaners, um, rubber bands, all that sort of stuff, some zip ties, um, little tube of Sicker Flex. Uh, we keep some spare AA and AAA batteries, which we don't really use for anything, but it's handy to have a few. This drawer is the only drawer with no stoppers, so that whole drawer can actually come out. So below that, uh, we've got a 60 litre angle fridge. 
Absolutely love angle fridges. This one has never caused any drama. Doesn't use much power. Can't rate it enough. In front of the slide here, um, we've got these two VanQuest pouches. They are basically full of all our uh, medicine. So we wanted to sort of be prepared if we were out camping in the middle of nowhere, um, we wanted to have just the basic stuff you can get from your chemist to cover most situations. Um, stuff for stomach pain and bites, eye drops, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so we've tried to cover what we can in there. Also just normal Panadol, painkillers, that sort of stuff. As well as actual ointments and whatever we need. It's all sort of within those two bags. Easy to reach, easy to grab. Over that side, I just keep a uh, different length hanks of paracord. We use that almost at every camp for clothes lines and stuff like that. Just some stubby coolers and a good torch in there is always handy. Underneath our fridge slide is a slide out bench which also comes all the way out and is a table as well. The whole draw system was built by uh, OTS, which is Outback Touring Solutions in Biwa. And really, really happy with the quality of it. Um, Brock from OTS does this sort of thing. He um, travels a lot in his setup, so he has a lot of good ideas and works with you to get what you want. That's all aluminium, um, that table, so it's nice and light. Um, the main thing we use it for is a bench. Even when we go grocery shopping, we slide the fridge out, pop that out as a bench, sit all the shopping there, load it into the fridge. It's really handy. So over this side, uh, we've just got so two medium-sized drawers and then one deep drawer. The deep drawer turned into a bit of a catch-all. It keeps stuff like our snow peak pegs and hammer, spare, you know, toiletries, that sort of stuff. Anything that's a bit big for any of the other drawers. Um, it also, so far on our trip, has ended up as a little bit of overfill for groceries and stuff. Anything that doesn't really need to be refrigerated, but can't be bothered putting in the other section, just throw in there like, we normally keep some wraps and uh, stuff like that in. This middle drawer is completely our clothes. So how we've tried to do it is condense it all into packing cubes. So these are really handy. Um, we had a couple before the trip and we ended up buying more because it's amazing what you can actually condense into one of them, zip it up, shove it in, close the drawer. We have gone outside this drawer. Um, originally the plan was both of us fit all our clothes in this one drawer, that didn't happen. Um, so we've got two small packing cubes in the front of this top drawer, up here. Uh, behind that we've just got sort of anything else, um, fire starters, little solar lights, camping lights. Um, we also keep our towels in here. Uh, we both just use the sort of more compact microfiber towels, which saves a heap of space and they dry a lot quicker. So we did go a little bit outside, just this one drawer. Also a note would be that's all of our clothes at the moment that we're using for this climate, I suppose. Behind the passenger front seat, there's a long-term storage bag, which at the moment has more stuff like our swimmers, summer sort of clothes, because we're in a colder climate at the moment. So what will happen is when we get to the warmer temperature, we'll swap everything out, put our jackets and that up in that bag, swap things out as well. <laughs> That will lead us on to the passenger side gullwing emu wing window. This was the first one we had fitted. It's the older style and it's actually glass. It's just tint, uh, heavily tinted glass. Inside this is pretty much our full electrical hub, I guess you'd call it. 
So anyone that hasn't seen it before, we've got the SeaTech D250S charge unit running through the SmartPass system, which made a big, big difference. Um, the SmartPass just sort of ramps up the 250S system. So when you're getting alternator or a solar charge, it just ramps that up. Down below, we've just got a SeaTech uh, battery charger which is hooked into the dual system so if we are ever at a powered site or at someone's house something like that we can just plug this in and top the system up we don't really need that this is only a small charger just the lithium x5 pretty much our solar can produce as much if not more than that we've never really got an issue so long as we've got clear sky even when it's pretty crappy sky, um, having 300 amp hours to play with is more than enough. Uh, next to that is a full control panel. So I'll just take you through quickly what they are. Auxiliary battery is the power to down here. We've got two cigarette points and four USB points. Uh, without that on, we can't actually charge. With that on, it powers those and we charge our phones as you can see next to that is our fridge that's the main one that stays on on these cool nights down in tassie, tassie we've been turning it off but basically been on for two months straight with our drama uh tv power so i'll just mention that it's a 16 inch kogan 12 volt tv uh, with a dvd player built into it also with a USB input, so we can plug a hard drive in or whatever. Um, we can watch movies, shows, listen to music, whatever we want off this TV. It's on a swing out bracket, so we can swing it out of the car, angle it either way. The speakers on this TV aren't great. So originally we had a UE Mega Boom in here which i believe ended up failing due to heat so we've actually got one of these uh little jbl flip four speakers which we've been stoked with i can plug that into the tv through an auxiliary cord and listen to anything we're watching through that the main thing we use it for is we clip this little carabiner on wherever we're sitting and we listen to a lot of podcasts while we're camping. That just sits up there in another one of those quick fist uh, grips. We do have a mini Super Nintendo system mounted. Anyone that's used these before, it's just a little unit. We can run it off our system, no worries. And it's just got preloaded games on it, like Donkey Kong, Super, uh, Super Mario Kart, that sort of thing. Your TV power, we've got another compressor switch, another water pump switch, as well as one in the front. Rear lights is the light bar on the back, awning lights, overhead lights, interior lights. You get the drift. Being able to fully light your camp as you go around. But down below is just a projector dual battery monitor, uh, which just keeps an eye on uh, when we've got the solar on, we know, you know we've got good charge coming in and when we run the inverter, it brings it down, all that sort of stuff, as well as just keeping everything nice and charged up so passenger side rear door so we've got three main shelves made out of this same alloy frame as well as another msa organizer just on these hooks through the eyelets uh, this one's just assorted stuff like bug spray some wd paracord um, handheld uhfs so we can just lift that off out of the way the bulk of this side is these four canvas bags because we're in tassie and it's never too far to the next town or shop uh, this one pretty much houses all of our dry food uh, in this one at the moment we carry just a game called finska in the front is all um, spare paper towel spare toilet paper that sort of stuff up here is our black wolf uh, tent as well as the two mattresses. We did a video, we actually carry that second tent for a few reasons, but if anything ever went wrong with our uh, bundle top, or if we want to camp away from the car, 
Uh, and in this one at the moment, it's pretty empty really. There's um, just a few extra dry food things and uh, a spare, like a little day bag, that sort of stuff. In behind this framing, we've got the drop room for our bundu top, as well as our Julka hose setup with the outing kit, which is a little filter and pickup pump that you can drop into a, a clean water source and draw from to have a hot shower, as well as just another length of hose that we can use to hose down the car or whatever we need, or if you tap to fill up your tank is too far away. Down lower, obviously, the access all the way through that I talked about. Just down below here is basically a big void. We keep a couple of extension cords, um, a power board, that sort of stuff in there. In here is, uh, it's like a little kiddie pool, so we can fill it with a set amount of water and recycle it through our Julka setup. Collapsible uh, sink. Another bucket, which normally is for washing the car. This is pretty much our full electrical bag. So there's charge cords for any of the stuff we have in the car. Just a few backup um, chargers, batteries, that sort of stuff, all in that one bag. Obviously our Julka hot tap unit here in front. In behind there, we have our Bush Dunny folding toilet. Um, I carry a pair of work boots with me, um, spare shoes, our outing pump for the Julka setup. We also carry a Mr. Buddy heater. Uh, we've also got an evaporative cooler, which we sure haven't needed here in Tasmania. So you can probably tell here, there's a lot of space really available. If ever we needed um, extra space in the setup, like that heater and the evaporative cooler, we don't really need them. We've used the heater once in Tasmania and it's been cold more or less the whole time. Uh, and that cooler, we don't know how much we'll use, but they take up a fair bit of room. So if ever we needed extra space, it wouldn't be a problem just to turf those. Another thing that these organizers are actually quite good for is when the door's closed, it does just sort of make, like contain everything into that section. It's just a good way of getting extra storage. Um, without that, that whole space in front of the door is just going to waste. Also up here, we've extended the breather hose for our main water tank inside. How we use this now is there is an access point to just put a tap or fill with a bucket in top of the tank. Luckily so far, we've obviously had access to plenty of uh, good water sources um, with taps. So on the other side, there is a hose connection on the water tank with a ball valve. So what we've been doing is we just clip the hose on, open the ball valve, start running it, then with this extended breather, you can just tuck it down outside the car, run the tap until water flows all the way through it. You know the tank's full, turn the tap off, shut the ball valve, disconnect the tap. Then I normally fire up the rear tap and just run it for five, 10 seconds just to get that little bit of water out of the top and then we're good to go. We know the tank's full. As I was mentioning before, up on top of this, there is a small section with a canvas bag we keep. Uh, in there's our seasonal clothing changeover, as well as a bit of extra room, um, just any odds and bods, um, snorkeling gear, that sort of stuff. Uh, stores up out of the way in there. Onto the last section, which is uh, just a passenger front seat. On this side in the glove box, we do keep a sat phone. We are in two minds about it before our trip, but we did decide that it would be worth it in case of an emergency and also we were planning on traveling some pretty remote places we did grab a sat phone it's just in one in a dolphin case which is like a waterproof case for it keep it there easy access uh, to the driver or passenger and it's just a bit of peace of mind knowing 
if something were to go wrong in the middle of nowhere, we could uh, get in contact with someone. Apart from that, it's all pretty basic stuff. Apologies for the pretty long, drawn out video. We do get a lot of questions on details of the setup, so I thought I'd try and do the most uh, detailed walkthrough that we could. I'm sure there's still stuff we've missed, so if you do have any more questions, just put them down below and we'll answer them for you. But that's pretty much the most up-to-date, full walkthrough of Pedro uh, we can do for you and hopefully it helped with if you've got any ideas or anything you've been wanting to do to your patrol. So obviously as you can tell we are still fine tuning and uh, rejigging a few things on our setup but really we're a bit over two months into the trip uh, full time every night in the car and we're really happy with how it's working. We will end up sort of chopping and changing as we go i think a few minor things but so far so good it does really suit us too we can make it as quick and easy as we want um, we have had diets where we just undo the four buckles of the tent put it up dive into bed and then with the awning we can go as elaborate as we want it stuff like that we are really enjoying not having the tow and obviously still being pretty capable off-road. We've recently done a few uh, tracks here in Tassie without any issue. Okay guys, so thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in our next one.